Howdy folks, I cannot see myself, I'm blind as a bear right now, and I just cannot see that viewfinder, I don't know if I'm in focus, Lord Jesus, I hope I'm in focus, I don't know if I'm going to redo it though, um, but okay, so I need your opinion on something, I am going to Coachella tonight, I'm leaving for Coachella tonight, and uh, <laughs> all I wear are damn black shirts and jeans, that's just my entire uniform basically, and I, I wanted to go to Coachella, so I'm not I'm not a huge music festival person. I don't usually do these things, but my buddy really wanted us to go this year. Um, and Lana Del Rey's going to be there, no doubt. Doja Cat, Tyler the Creator, there's a bunch of good people. Sabrina Carpenter is one that I'm, I've just gotten into. Um, a, a, a bunch of different people on the list. Um, I know everybody said Coachella fell off, but I don't know. I'm, I'm excited about it. Um, but, so I only wear, like, black t-shirt and jeans usually, but I wanted to, like, dress up, right? So I made this, like, little denim jacket for Lana Del Rey. Real excited about that one. That's the most one. That's the one we're most excited about. Um, so I made a jacket for that, but then I was like, well, the other days I'd like to dress up too. I'd like to wear something, you know, kind of cool. So I sent my buddy Troy, um, because we're both real big Britney heads, right? And I sent him a picture of Britney's Pepsi pants that she wore in her Pepsi commercial. And I said, are these too much? Should I try to make these? Or is it too, is it too much? He said, no, you have to do it. So I tried, man. And I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if that was very successful. I did I did work on it. And I got like made little bell bottoms on it and everything. You know? I made the attempt, but I just keep looking at it and it looks so ugly to me. And I wanna know. <laughs> Is this shit ugly? <laughs> I'm real nervous about it too, you know? I hear Coachella's pretty intense. And I have like real bad allergies this time of year. And I heard it's like a huge dust bowl. We're in the desert. And it's gonna be real hot. And we're gonna try to get like real up close for Lana. Um, so, I don't know. I'm gonna, we're gonna be fighting for our lives. But we, we will be there and we will we'll have fun. Um, I just feel really bad. I actually feel real guilty about going. Because... I know Alistair would have a really good time if he went too. Um, so I just keep thinking about him. I'm just so sick of these damn appointments. It, it just feels like I'm, I'm experiencing things. Like this is something that is something I'm experiencing for the first time, and he should be with me. My husband should be with me. And I just I miss him so much. And so I leave for Coachella tonight. Um, and when I get back, I'm gonna go because I've been at my mom's house for the better part of the night. And so when I get back, I think I'm going to go back to El Paso and go check on my house, and I think I'm going to stay there. Um, which I'm also real worried about. I'm feeling a little bit of anxiety about that one, too, because just being there without him just feels depressing, man. It, it feels terrible. It's just my husband should be there. It's me and Brando, and we're sitting around, and I feel like he should be sitting on the other side of the couch, or he should be next to me in bed, and, and it's just rough. My mom's here now. She just got here. I was asking everybody if I'm gonna I'm gonna ask them if these look trash. Who are you asking? The people. There's people on there? No, there's not <laughs> She said, Is there people on there? Not yet, but there will be. Um the we're gonna go to Sonic in a minute. We're gonna take a little drive and go get Sonic drinks. I've been thinking about it all day. Um but I was asking them if this is trashy, because it looks bad. I just don't think it looks it didn't come out how I like it. How I was envisioning it. And I did move the star. You did? I peeled it up and I moved it. I just added more paint where the blue was. Yeah. But, I don't know. I think it's fine. And, and what are you going to do? You have to use them now. You already made them. Well, I mean, I have other paints I can bring. Um, well, just bring them just in case. And I was telling him I feel like guilty that I'm going with that Alistair. Because I know he'd really like to go to something like this. And I feel like I'm. I could have waited for him, maybe gone next year with him. Well, what would he say? Alistair's petty. He probably said, Don't go. <laughs> um, this episode is kind of being sponsored by Helix Sleep, though. Um, and we've been working with Helix Sleep for gosh, like since 2020. We got our first Helix mattress in 2020. It was like a queen size mattress. We were so happy with it because the bed that we had before the Helix mattress was this this bed in the box that we ordered online that just was it was like the cheapest one we could find right 
we were like, we'll just get the cheapest one we can find. It's fine. It's just a bed. It's just to go to sleep. Uh, not, not really thinking about how Alistair and I do spend a lot of time in bed and a lot of our relationship revolves around, you know, watching things together and spending a lot of time together, cuddling up together with our dogs. And, um, so that bed was terrible. It didn't last hardly a year. Um, and now we're like four years later with these Helix mattresses because we have two. We have a king size as well that we got after the queen size because we wanted more room. And these mattresses have lasted, we're almost on four years and the top is still real tough. I'm, I'm somebody who really, really struggles with uh, getting a good night's rest, which is kind of why I haven't been. I already have insomnia. Like, it's terrible, terrible, terrible insomnia. I can step to like 4 a.m. Uh, if my mind is racing, which is the hard part, I can't really turn my mind off, then I could be up all night, right? Um, I will be up until my brain goes. And um, so I need, like, there's a few factors that I need. I need to be able to turn my mind off, which is always the hard part. But having a really great mattress, a really great bed, really helps to settle me in for the night, make sure I am ready to sleep, and if I feel comfortable, if I feel like I'm going about to get the best rest of my life, then that'll help me go to sleep pretty quick. Um, put something on the phone, something like some sort of like History Channel documentary, put the phone off to the side, sort of let that lull me to sleep, right? But if I don't have a good mattress, if I don't have a good pillow, if I don't have a great place to sleep, right? I think invest in your sleep is always really important. And if I don't have a really great place to sleep, I'm not going to get to sleep. I just, I'd be uncomfortable tossing and turning, end up on my phone, and I'll end up getting up and just going to the living room or something like that. And that's happened plenty of times. So, the Helix mattresses that we have have been a godsend. But, I feel terrible sleeping in them by myself, because I sleep in them. I go home, to El Paso, me and Brandon get in bed, and I can go to sleep, but I'm thinking, well, my husband should be here next to me. So, I'm real excited for him to come home plop down in the mattress next to me and we just enjoy the Helix mattress together. Helix Sleep makes premium mattresses customized to fit your needs and it's conveniently shipped to your door. Alistair and I have different sleep preferences so we took Helix's sleep quiz. The quiz matches you to your perfect mattress based on your body type, sleep positions, and other factors. I'm an all over sleeper. Alistair is a side sleeper. Alistair likes a firm mattress. I like more medium. We took the quiz once when we needed a queen size mattress and then again when we upgraded to a king size and both times it matched us to the Midnight Looks mattress. Now if you're nervous about buying something online, you do get a 100 night sleep trial to make sure it fits you. It comes rolled up in a box and is super easy to set up. Helix will even ship your mattress to your door for free in the US. Helix mattresses are also really great for you because they're fiberglass free, so don't worry about that. Um, but I always think it's really important to invest in your sleep if anybody you know or yourself are looking for a new mattress and you think that Helix sounds right for you, you can go down to the link below or go to helixsleep.com slash Zach and B where you can get 20% off of your mattress and two free pillows. Just Diet Coke. Just a Diet Coke? Yeah. I can't even reach it. I'm so tiny. Everybody makes fun of the way you say Beyonce. Look. Be Beyonce. Aw, you both are so sweet. Love the reaction. They just don't know. <laughs> Wait, is that your mom reacting with you? Oh gosh. That's <laughs> not. Can I get two large Diet Cokes? Yes, anything else? That'll be it. 582, I'll have it right now. Thank you. Thank you. You don't have any change, do you? Do you have a five? No, we gave that we gave that lady my Do I pay on cash? That? You can pay your card right there. Okay. She I don't know if it fucking did. They don't give me no messages. I don't think it did. What's that? Well, they're it's still waiting for pay. Is it? Well, you can't pay now. It went away. Well, and then it wouldn't work it, and that's not my fault. Yeah, we gave that lady her money. <laughs> she needed it worse. She did. It scared me though a little bit. I felt I she thought was banging he, on the window. I was thinking for a second, did he already order? <clears throat> so look at this. I am with your wife one hundred percent. I was so in love with Renaissance. I was afraid Why? disappointed. <laughs> so do they think I'm young or oh you're gosh. old? Oh my gosh. That is the question. Am I older? Am I? Well, then this is my mother. This is not my sister. This is not my wife. This is my mother.
People liked it though. No, I I, mm -hmm. I like that because I was so scared about it. She's obsessed, y'all. She's been reading the comments over and over again. I was so scared. We should have posted that on our actual channel because we have a channel coming up called Coffee and Cosmos. It's actually already live. We just don't have nothing on it yet. But we're gonna have the Tortured Poets Department. We're gonna react to that first. Listen to that one. We'll have that right. over there, and that'll be the first video on that mm -hmm. channel. But um, yeah, I mean, people liked this one. I so. mean, we'd been planning the channel for a little while. We were originally gonna cover Desperate Housewives, though. Yeah, and we're still gonna do that a little bit. Oh, she's going. She's zooming. She took my two dollars and she's <laughs> gone. <laughs> she did. She didn't. I thought she was gonna ask for something from Sonic. I was like, okay. There was a um, there was a tweet. Somebody somebody tweeted our um, video out. Um, and it said uh, something like, like mom and gay son react to Cowboy Carter. Oh, I know, Carter. I know. <laughs> that was our fault, though. We just should have said our names. We didn't. Yeah. We didn't introduce ourselves. At least they knew I was your mom. And they didn't say wife and gay wife husband. And gay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, this is my, I'm Zach, and this is Miss Jen, my mom. Jen. She's she gonna bang way. on the window and so I'm, I'm gonna do So mom gay son. That's <laughs> nice. Alright, I'll be right back with your card and receipt. Do we have you? You have a five. Alright, you're all set. Thank you, here we go. Thank you, you have a good night. So how did you know that you were... I didn't gay. know I was gay. Yeah. Is that question out of nowhere? I don't know. We're having a conversation. Because <laughs> mom and gay son? Yeah. <laughs> Why not? Um, I don't know. We don't, we haven't, we haven't talked about it like this. Huh. I don't know. I feel like you just know. Um, I... I'm trying to remember, like, early, early back. Because I can remember pretty far back. Um, I remember having crushes on little boys at school. And, like, they would have girlfriends. And I would... I don't know. How did I know I was gay? That's a hard question. Well, I guess. <laughs> Is that a hard question? I get... Well... It's kind of a weird question, though. It's a weird question. Because how do you know mm. you're straight? What? I mean, do you know what I'm saying? Well, yeah. I mean, so it's like, kind you of like not yeah. a fair question. I mean, yeah, it's it's a double standard question, or guess, or yeah. something like that. Yeah. Um, I I just always I did have crushes on little boys when I was younger, when I was a little kid. Um, but I didn't like I didn't have that's the thing is like you don't have words for it, that you don't right. know what that is you don't understand what that is um, you don't know that you I don't know because you just crush on people right and then it's sort of society that tells you no you're supposed to go have a girlfriend you should be yeah. crushing on little girls yeah. and then when you get older you just you learn more words for things like that right so I already remember like in like when we got to Chesapeake Beach because I was pretty I didn't know a whole lot I was pretty like I guess military kids are kind of sheltered compared to like all the other kids right so I didn't have like I think we were in on base till I was in like sixth grade and then mm -hmm. um we went to Chesapeake Beach and that's where I met all those kids and those mm -hmm. kids were like they knew all of this stuff that I didn't know mm -hmm. so they taught me all this different stuff right um and that's when I first heard like gay and I think I probably heard it you know what I did hear it before that but like still I just didn't have like words for it and so they were like kind of the first people who really explained that to me um but, like, it was under the context of that was really bad. And you're not supposed to talk about that and stuff like that. And you remember how we used to go to, like, youth group with Josh? Mm -hmm. And the van would come pick us up and mm -hmm. we'd go to youth group. And every time we went to youth group, it always turned into, um, because it was led by, like, some teenagers. And they would always turn into, like, very homophobic shit. Like, anti-gay, out the ass. Um, no pun intended. Um, but... And they would all just talk about gay people being bad. And so I knew that I had... Oh, she brought a crew! <laughs> <laughs> we gave the five away. We have tipped the five. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, and then it's sort of, so you like what when you learn sort of language for things like that and you do kind of start realizing, well, this does fit me. Like I check these boxes. That is immediately masked or like covered up with or like muddied with shame because then you have all of this outside noise as you're discovering yourself you have this outside noise telling you that that version of being is is wrong and so you shouldn't 
you shouldn't be like that. Um, and so then you push that down, 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 mm -hmm. and you convince yourself that it wasn't. Because I always convinced myself, up until I like high school, always convinced myself that I was not, could not be gay because I did want to have a wife. I did want to have kids. Like I had like a fantasy of like what I would be like as an adult. Mm -hmm. And because I knew that I wanted stuff like that, I was like, well, that doesn't, that means I'm not gay, right? Mm -hmm. I couldn't be gay. Um, and you just kind of like explain away any sort of like feelings you have towards boys or anything like that. How did you, how did you know I was gay? <laughs> how did I know? Making my pop star pants, my Britney Spears pants and, <laughs> and things. Um, I probably, well, I don't know. I don't know a defining moment. Um, but I always, I always knew that you liked. We're a little pa I always knew <laughs> that you liked things that, um, like we would try and buy, like, I don't know, toys yeah. and Spider-Man or whatever the end thing was. And you wouldn't really have any interest in it. But every time we watched a movie, you always wanted, like, you wanted an Ariel doll. You were mm. obsessed with Ariel. Queen Amidala. And I think I just always, I think as a parent, you just know something's different. Um, and I had the other kids to compare some things to. <laughs> I mean, versus. Do you think Zachary's a little fruitier than Bailey? <laughs> no, I don't mean it to sound <clears throat> it weird, it, but it's true. Yeah, like, I'm no, not going to say something saying. that's not true. Yeah. Um all of your friends, well, most of your friends, you had some friends that were guys, but mm -hmm. most of your friends were always girls. You always got along with girls better, it almost seemed like. Yeah. Um, because I think all the boys were think, older too, though. Like well, Mikey I, and all of them, like, yeah, that we grew but up I also with, think older. that you had more interest with the girls, like Britney Spears. Yeah. And things like that that the boys could have gave a shit less about. I always knew that I was going to be prepared. Like, I never said this out loud or anything, but I always knew I was going to be prepared um, for if you told me that. And um, What do you mean you knew you'd be prepared? I think because I, I had already suspected it. Mm. And so I already thought it. And so it wasn't going to be something. I always thought if, if he comes to me and tells me this, it's not going to be something that's a huge shock. But did you, so it may not have been a huge shock, but did you worry about it? Well, of course, because as a parent, so here's where, like, I get where parents, um, I think everyone needs to be more accepting, and as parents, we have to love our children above all else and mm -hmm. support them no matter their choices, because it's not always choices, right? Yeah. But um, as a parent, even though I thought I would be prepared, it's still kind of hard because... I knew you were about to go off to school to the University of Alabama. That I was very concerned about that. Um, what were you concerned about? I was just really worried about hate mm. and hate crimes and bad things happening. And um, I wasn't close and I wasn't going to be there to jump in and protect, even though they never liked me doing that. Anyway, um... But, yeah, and then there's this, okay, you know how for you, you said it was, um, you didn't want it to be true because you had this idea of a wife and children. Mm -hmm. A parent has that same idea. Yeah. And so there's almost this process that you have to go to, you have to go through to realize, oh, I mean, it really is okay because we can still have all of these things. It's just going to be in a different way. Mm. You know what I mean? I know, but like, what does your, how do you have to come to terms with something like that? Um, I think like it, you, for me, I think it just takes time. Was it just, did you, what, was there any feeling of like, like disappointment or not disappointed in me, but disappointment that, I don't know, did you think I wouldn't end up having a family or, I don't know, I in guess, I guess my question do. is like, okay, so when you were talking about how, um, you, when I was younger, you would compare me to the other kids and stuff like that. I did, did you? That, well, I, not really I understand, compare. It's, I understand what you're saying, yes. Um, but what I'm saying is like, did you, did you know any gay people in real life that you would have been able to see 
I don't know, go yes. out and like start families and things like that who you would have been able to be like, okay, well, this person did that. So my son can do that as well. Or did you just not have any other gay people who led lives like that to compare it to when you thought, I don't know. Well, when I was young, early 20s, yeah. you, were a, you were just a baby. I mean, I had a friend who was gay and he lived in our apartment complex. So he worked with me. Um, I spent a lot of time with him. Me and my friend um, spent a lot of time with him. We used to go out and hang out and had a lot of fun together. I never saw him have a family, but I remember the time that he and uh, the three of us were riding around in the car because that was the thing to do, go riding around on the drag. And we were riding around and one night he said, I have something I want to tell you guys. We were like, okay. He was like, <laughs> I'm gay. Or however, he, I don't remember the exact words. <clears throat> and um, we were like, okay. But like, I already knew. <laughs> I already knew, always, always knew. He says, sir, um, sir. I knew. But he, I mean, we were great friends, amazing friends. He actually moved to another state. And so that's why we'd quit being friends. Um, or I just didn't see him in a really long time. But when we lived in Maryland, we did have the same sex couple living next door to us. Um, Ooh. when we lived in the townhouse. Oh, yeah. Mm hmm. And they lived I barely, next door. I forgot all about them. Yeah, yeah. They lived next door to oh. us. And I used to sit out on my back porch and they were sitting out on their I back still porch talk and to, just um, chat back and forth with them. I don't talk to him anymore, but Ben, mm -hmm. um, I, I did a YouTube video with Ben one time. Mm -hmm. I and, remember. Yeah. No, they were great. I, I liked them a lot. Mm. Yeah, so Ben had like two moms. Um, yeah. Huh. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's fine. I wasn't like submersed in it, but I just never, I never really cared about things like that, honestly. Hmm. I feel like, I always felt like the black sheep of my family a little bit because my ideals were so different than everyone else, so. Hmm. I was nervous about like all the extended family too. Like, hmm. I didn't think Granny and Papa would be like mean about it or anything, mm -hmm. but I right. didn't know what they were gonna like think. Mm -hmm. Because I don't think they would have told me to my face anyway if they'd had a problem with it. But they, I mean, because pretty much the first time that ever it could be anybody acknowledged that in that side of the family is when I did bring Alistair home. Mm -hmm. I didn't have any conversation with Granny and Papa. I didn't have anything. I just brought him. And that, but they knew. Like, you, well, they did know because I'd already told them. Yeah. And I remember her saying, We don't care. We love mm -hmm. him anyway. And then, um, my dad sent me a text message and said, I just want you to know that I love Zachary mm -hmm. no matter what. And that was that. I remember one time that neighbor lady asked, called me gay or something. I don't know if she was asking if I was gay or something. I don't know. But you were like, I remember walking by your bedroom. You were on the phone with her and you were telling her oh, not to be calling me gay. That you know? lady across the street. Yeah. Well, yeah, because you, we were new, they were new, and so she wanted to get you and her daughter to be friends, and so y'all met all of 10 minutes, and then after you guys had, like, left or whatever, um, she told me that she thinks that you're gay, and I was so mad at her. I mean, we, I still have the messages. You still have the messages on wood. On Messenger. On Facebook mes Messenger. Oh, we were so mad at each other. I was so mad at her. Only because I just didn't think that she had any right to be talking about you in any kind of way. Yeah, I was mad. I felt, I felt, de I felt defended. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let me, I'm going to look right now. You can look at the message. I guarantee you I still have them. I'm, I never delete anything. And let me tell you something about your brother. Bailey kind of always looked out for you and had your best interests. One time he had a sleepover down the street at um, the neighbor's house. And he called me first thing in the morning. It was very early in the morning. And he was like, can you come get me? And I went and picked him up. And he was clearly upset, but he wouldn't talk to me. And he wouldn't tell me why he was upset. 
um, but he was like rage upset. And um, later, a long time, years later, he told me that the reason why he was so mad that day is because that little boy had told him um, that morning that you were gay and he was so mad and so upset that that boy was even talking about you that he, he went home and they, I don't know if they ever were friends after that, but they didn't really hang out because um, he was so angry with that.